Well, today is a slam dunk for sure as the Providence College Friars open up their season tonight at the dunk. So what better way to kick it all off than with a look back at history? Local author Paul Leonardo's new book, Homegrown, The Making of the 1972-73 Providence College Friars, is here and it promises to be a great read for all. Paul, good morning, sir. Good morning. Nice to have you. Nice it, to it's here. great, it's great to have it. you here. Yes. I've told you as we've been communicating via email and we, I've met you before what a massive longtime Friar basketball fan yes. I am. So when I was first getting into the team, probably around the early 90s or something like that, all I heard from anybody was, yeah, the, the, the Friars are great, but you never saw that 73 team yeah. with Ernie D and yeah. Marvin Barnes. What is it that continues to captivate Rhode Islanders about that magical season for you personally? Uh, for me, there's so much pride. I mean, being not just being a Rhode Islander and having this great team, but you know, Ernie D was, was a legend growing up. I came from North Providence. He went to the same high school I later went to. So there's a source of pride there. And I grew up, I was just old enough to experience that team. And it was, it was very special uh, watching all the people around the state, how they just cultivated around the newspaper, the radio, to hear what, what the PC was doing that night. It was amazing. Yeah, and the Friars uh, Hoops team, the men have such a storied history. You know, we think 73, of course, and then 87, 97, you know, and they've had a remarkable run recently. But for some reason, this is the team that still does it for everyone. You know, people have those fond memories and recollections, don't they? Yes, but the history does go back even further. I think what brought this team together was the, the previous in the 60s when, the, when PC had some very good teams under Coach Mullaney, and there were some great basketball players, and I think that's what drew Ernie to come to, to stay home and to actually play college ball here rather than go. He was recruited everywhere, as was Marvin Bond. He Ernie was such a ball handling wizard. He could yes, do anything. He was called the magician for, for a reason, and he could shoot from anywhere on the court. He could pass a ball, no look, behind the back. He was amazing, and people came to watch him perform. It was really a performance. It was more than just a basketball game. Absolutely. So does the book take us through that storied history as to how this team came about and then take us through the season? What does it, it really it capture? Does. It really is. It's a history book in a sense because it does go back to the early days of how th the school formed the basketball team and it came through the 50s, the 60s, culminating here. So it is a coffee table book in a sense. It highlights the season. Every game is highlighted. The NCAA tournament games are highlighted. So you get to a, a kind of a mix of what happened during each game along the way. It's At what point did you realize you had a book in here? Did you uh, decide to pursue this? I did. I was talking to Ernie D for several months. He wanted to write a book about his life. It would have been an autobiography. And that book hasn't culminated yet. It, maybe it will, but this, this came up because I, like, I have so much information. I can't just sit on this. Right. And I did some more further research, and I, I, was, I was shocked by how much great information there was that I didn't even know. I mean, so you were growing up, obviously, being a fan and whatnot. Then yes. you're actually you know, befriending Ernie D. Yeah. You're talking to him. That must have been a, a bit surreal for you. It, it, was. it was. It was. It was shocking in a sense. And obviously, I've been writing for a while, and I figured I could write a book with Ernie. It's no big deal. But it was, it was, he knew so much. All, this year, all these years later, he remembered what went on during all these games 50 years ago. It's, I was, it was amazing. reading a little bit, too, about how he would pick Marvin Barnes up and he would, they would drive together for pickup games. Yes. They really for, yeah. forged a relationship, didn't they? The whole team, actually. They, they got to, when Kevin Stakem came on board during that season, he kind of solidified that, that whole program because he was the same way. He would work out every day together. They were just, they were just incredible. And if you read the book, it'll, it'll explain how the relationships formed. I can't wait to read it. And where can we get it? It's on Amazon. It's an e-book as well as a hardcover book as you can see. Um, now for you, w was there pressure? Because people have such an affinity for this team. You want to get it right. You want to make sure that you capture it flawlessly. Yeah. Does that weigh on you uh, at all? I'm confident that I did my research and, and, and talking directly with, with Ernie as well as some of Marvin Bond's like, childhood friends. They gave me a lot of information about, about Marvin that I didn't know about. And I think people are going to be kind of surprised by how he developed as a player. You know, so many people out there, they think, I can't remember what I had for breakfast today. I can't remember what I did yet last night. But for you, when Ernie is starting to tell you these stories and he's, and he's recalling it so yeah. vividly, everything that happened, are you just blown away that I, someone could have I, that recollection? I, I am, because I go back and I check it. He was exactly right. He scored this many points against that team, and that was the score, and these were the players he was playing against. He knew them all. He knew who his, his competitors were and what he had to do to beat them, and he still re remembers them like it was yesterday. And in 73, the Final Four, now they, they lost in the semifinal. They would have played UCLA, correct? Yes. And they, earlier that year, they had got, they were blown out by the they Bruins. They were pretty much blown out. They were they held on for about a quarter, and then after that, uh, Bill Walton and, and the team just took over. And I've. 
heard Bill Walton say that even if the Friars said that they would have wiped the floor with them again. Come on, give that, me a break. That's what he said. But you know what? You trust Ernie and Marvin to come up with a game plan because they were beat so badly that game. They would it would have been a different ball game. Well, it really is just a remarkable story. And for somebody like me who has such a love for the Friars, uh, it absolutely is a must read. Paul, thank uh, you very I much. I appreciate it, Brandon. Thank for you very being much. Here. If you guys would like to check out Homegrown and Paul's other books, he's got some great stuff out there. You can head to roadshow.com for more info.